this is not the primary subject, but I had to stop and catch this light. Oh my God, it looks phenomenal. There's an oak tree down here, an old, old ancient oak tree. And I'm gonna try and capture it with this light behind. So I need to get moving quick. Let's go. <laughs> Still not there yet, uh, but it's only there. But I've got to capture this one. It's another old oak. It's a beauty. And I did name this one Jabba in a, a different video I done last year. I'm capturing it again from the other side though. Two reasons, the light behind is beautiful, but it's also getting a nice bit of light. A bit of side light from this golden light behind me. Okay, so I'm gonna drop it on that left hand third. It'll come a little bit wider. Just gonna move over a little bit. There we go. There we go. Try and incorporate a nice bit of sky. There, oh, that's beautiful. Lovely pink and blues in the sky. And I'm gonna be really quick with this. F8, check it's focused, move on. Beautifully focused, actually. Okay, because I want this light beyond this other tree. I'm loving the fact that we're getting a little bit of side light on this tree. It's, be it's a beautiful tree. And I shot it last time looking back up because of the light behind me. But this time, I'm shooting it the other way. Okay, we've got a nice bit of atmosphere as well, which is helping, helping diffuse them nice colours. It seriously is beautiful. That's a bit of a slog, because I've had to work a lot further than what I normally do, <laughs> which I'll talk about in a minute. But first, the sun is going to rise behind this tree. And I know this from past experience, so I've shot this over the last 10 years. So I know this tree works, but we have got problems with it. One of the problems is the actual, there's a little tree behind and it's got these, these little fences around obviously to protect the trees. And it, I think it's to protect the trees more from the deers having to go at them rather than humans, I think. I'm sure it is. So they don't stop these growth of these smaller trees. But we're gonna get the sunrise and it's gonna be, it is gonna be spectacular. I know it is, I just know it is. Dutch wood. So yes, we've got a bit of a, 
issue with the tree behind. So what I do try and do, or what I try and tend to do, is try and hide the tree behind the main tree and let it just blend in. The other thing I can do is actually move down a little bit and try and incorporate it, put it on that left hand side, but focus on the tree as well, which I, I might actually do that. And while I'm waiting for that light, I've already captured one shot and put it on the left hand side, hiding this tree. Um, and if there's any little bit of photoshopping I'll have to do, I'll have to photoshop it, but you can hardly see it, literally hardly see it. Um, and I might have to, again, if I come down a little bit, that will help. What I do like about it is as well, we've got this little line of grass. We've always had this little pathway to the tree and it's capturing the light now. And it's beautiful. And that can lead you up to this tree, but we need to move around and then we expose this other tree, if that makes sense. <laughs> it, it's actually really frustrating. It really frustrates me about this tree. It's just a shame. It is really a shame. I might actually have to get a little bit closer and try and hide it a bit more incorporate this path will it work from down here from down here we, we lose the shape of the tree I mean it still looks phenomenal but so here we're more in between the two trees we've now got two trees behind and it, it does frustrate me so putting it in the middle probably helps a bit I think I'm gonna have to hide it you know it's frustrating me that much I think I'm going to have to hide it, so well, I, I think our only option is is to come somewhere, somewhere there. So I'll put you down, stay. The sun is just starting to poke through, and I think that's pretty well it actually. Now the tree leans from left to right. So I'm going to put it on that left hand third with a, a lot of negative space on that, that one side. And what I'm also going to do, I think, is just drop it down to f6.3. And I'll just have a look, see. And then I'll probably bump it up to f22, f16, f22, as we get a nice sun star. OK, so I've, I've spent a, a little bit of time capturing a couple of similar shots, trying, picking out the best one but I'm thinking about dropping my long, long lens on and, and then coming tighter into it and see what difference that makes. Um, so let's go back up there a little bit. We'll drop the long lens on. Okay, so what it has done, it's made it more atmospheric. It looks beautiful, this lovely orange soft light around it. What I would be worried about is just blowing that that sun eye light out, so I'm going to drop it down by a stop and I'm bracketing the shot as well just to make sure that one of the images has got that bit of detail in the sky because it's quite bright even though it's diffused and we're going to lose it in a minute yeah, that's fine so what I'm actually going to do is just stop here till that light goes above this higher cloud, this mid-level cloud and then hopefully we'll still get some ambient light come through with this bit of haze that we've got, winter haze. As predicted, we've got some deer. Not in a great place, to be honest. So they're still there. So 
so I'm going to just chill and relax. Not going to be a great photo, but they're lovely to see. No stags. They're quite happy with me being here. They keep having a little look and then a little feed, a little look. <laughs> so they're happy. So the reason why this bench is, bench is so special to me is this is one of the first places I actually brought Cooper. And it's also one of the first vlogs I ever did about nine years ago, something like that. First proper video vlog. Not really a vlog as such for you guys to watch, but just for me. Um, so holds a lot of emotion this bench does. Uh, yeah. I remember I got my GoPro Hero 4, I think, and I put it on here on a little tripod. And Cooper was only about six months, he's only grabbed it and running around <laughs> in the GoPro. So, what I'm going to do is and stick a little tag on this bench. I actually remember capturing one of my favourite shots and it could have been, could have well been on that morning and it was one of the best mornings I've had where we've got that rolling fog covered in and out but with the, with the sunlight, sunlight above casting in and out of it and I've walked just round this corner as an hanging out branch, actually you could see it from here and I, I managed to capture the deer under the branch in the mist and fog. Um, Very memorable morning. Give me these a rest anyway. We'll see you, Paul. Okay, let's see if we can see any more. I can see some deer over in the distance as some more just ran through. There's a lovely oak over the back there I might try and capture. So let, let's see if I can get it because it's behind the wall. But I can, should be able to shoot it from this side. Okay, let's go. This is actually the tree I'm on about. Just round the corner. I was facing this way, but just round the corner. There's a young stag and I'm going to try and capture him if I can. I'm not sure if I'll scare him off. I want him to come this way a little bit. He's a little bit too far away, but I'm going to capture him. I'll just crop the image if not. 
Let's try and see if we can. They've already spotted me, by the way. I was walking around the corner. They're already looking at me. Now, if I can just sneak around the wall, here we go. It's actually three or four and a little puppy stag. <laughs> We've got uh, the ruins down there of old Lady Jane Grey. So that's quite an interesting thing to show. We've actually got the river. But in the week, at the weekend it gets extremely busy down there. Loads of people walking down. There's a cafe at the end there. We've got Cropton uh, Reservoir at the end. Good for some sunset photography. So if you're interested in a workshop around Bradgate Park, like I say, I, I cut my teeth here. So. Um, in photography, so I do know it quite well. Some fantastic oak trees, fantastic. These deer are still here and they're just watching me. <laughs> I'm actually waiting to see what they're doing and they're waiting to see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'll tell you what, why don't we try and get a little bit closer to them, see what they do. If I can just keep working around this, this wall, maybe I've got a chance. They've not, they're not, they're interested in me, that's all. What's good is we've got someone in the distance behind them, so that might actually force them this way. So what I want to be is the lesser threat, let's say. What, what I'm looking at, why I'm actually photographing them is actually the composition, what's in the background, if I can get in the right position, but at the end of the day, the first, first thing is actually getting the shot Ooh, and not tripping over. We've got two beautiful ones looking at me now. So what, here we go, here we go. Okay, let me put you down. Right, now the problem I've got is I've got a person right, right in the distance, right behind him. as he was looking at me, and he's just gone into the dip now. As soon as he looks back at me, we'll try and get the shot. Typical, the only one I wanted to lock, and he hasn't locked, he's had his head down munching. Oh well. So they finally got fed up on me. Been here probably half an hour. Trying to catch the one with the, the antlers. And he's looked at me probably twice. You know what, I think I'm done. I've got a couple of nice images this morning. The light's quite flat now. And I've done. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. I will keep my camera out on the way back until I walk beyond, just in case I come across a, a stray deer. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this one. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.